Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at a variety of techniques for creating this sort of graphical seamless loop. So lots of really interesting things in this one. Let's get started. So first of all, a quick word about my project setup. Very predictable, 1920, 1080, 24 frames a second and a duration of 720 frames, or if you prefer, 30 seconds. And I also want to point out that in preferences time, I've got my frame numbering set to starts from one. If yours starts from zero, uh, this is not going to make any sense. And so do make sure that it's set to that so you can follow what I'm saying correctly. So there are two different ways in which we can create a seamless loop. And the first is what's known as ping-ponging. And what that means is basically the start of the loop is exactly the same as the end of the loop and vice versa. So let's have a look at that. Well, I'm, first of all, I'm going to set up my loop. And so I'm going to come to frame 48, bearing in mind one is my first frame. And I'm going to come to mark and mark play range out. Or you can do option command O if you prefer, which I normally do. Anyway, there you go. And you can see that loop has been set up there down on that mini timeline. So then I'm going to select the rectangle tool and holding down the shift key, I'm going to draw a small square, smallish square like that. Make sure to center it up. I'll come into the shape and I don't want to fill. I want an outline to be easier to see. And let's go for an outline of say 20. And let's set the joint type to square to get rid of those horrible rounded corners. So let's talk about how we ping pong. So let's come to properties and let's come to scale and let's add parameter behavior oscillate because as you know, oscillate kind of effectively ping pongs, doesn't it? So I'm just gonna set up that amplitude to be something like 20%, so it's not too gross. Now, the thing to know about oscillate is that it uses 60 seconds as its default base time. So when you see a speed of 10, what that is saying is that it's going to oscillate 10 times within the space of 60 seconds. And of course, that means a full oscillation cycle. So if we press play on this, you'll see that it doesn't loop properly. However, if we were to change that speed to something like 30, you'll see that it does indeed create a perfect loop. And that's obviously because 60 divided by our two second loop gives us a speed of 30. And indeed, if we set that speed to 60, it also works. 90 also works. 120 also works. 180 also works. So that's kind of useful to know. So anyway, as you can see, what that means is that we've got our start and end frames are effectively the same, and that's why the loop actually works. So that's the first way of doing it. And the other way of doing it is much more interesting. And that's that we disguise the start and end of the thing that we're looping. In other words, it's either off screen or it's otherwise invisible at both ends of the animation. So let's have a look at that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that oscillate for now. And let's do this by having an animation that moves our box from left to right across the screen. So let's come to the X position and add parameter behavior and a ramp. And let's find a value for the start. So for the first frame, we'll make sure it's off the screen. So let's go for negative 1200. And we know that if we have positive 1200, it'll be off the screen at the other end as well. So then you see that the entire timeline gives us that. So then what we can do is take this group, right click, make clone layer. And then from that clone, we're going to come to object and replicate. So I'm going to turn off the original group. We don't need to see that. So for the shape, I'm going to choose line and I'm going to set the start and end points to zero. And the important thing to understand about this replicator is all we're doing with it is selecting points and using these play options down here. We can't actually use any of the others meaningfully because it'll mess with our loop. So in order to get our loop, remembering that our loop duration is 48 frames, 
I'm going to set the source frame offset down here to 48. So now if I set the number of points to 15, you'll see we've got a continuous loop. Our rectangle is a little bit too large, so let's reduce that size so we can see it more clearly. So there you go. That is now a perfect loop. And just to quickly point out that the reason I chose 15 for the number of points is that our duration is 30 seconds and 30 divided by 2, which is the length of our loop, gives us 15. So that's why we've got 15 points. And now we can very easily make this loop a lot more interesting. So if I come to the rotation and add parameter behavior oscillate, you'll see that even with that oscillation, we've got a perfect loop. So to reduce the oscillation to maybe 45 degrees. Let's come back to properties and let's maybe add an oscillate to the Y position. And let's reduce that amplitude a bit. But you see, again, we've got this great little loop just goes on forever with this fairly complex animation, but it's all based on one single layer. So you'll see that our actual animation is simply just this cube here bouncing across the screen like that very, very slowly over the duration of those 30 seconds that make up the entire timeline. So let me switch back on our replicator. And if we wanted this to go faster, what we could do is come to the ramp for the X position and we could simply change the end offset. So let's go for say 360. So it's going twice as fast. And it looks like that. All still works just fine. You'll notice that in this case, the default speed for the oscillator of 10 in both cases is perfectly fine because it's being able to complete its entire oscillation cycle well within the duration of the 30 seconds of our project. So now let's actually look at making something a bit more interesting. What I'm going to do first of all is to delete these behaviors. We don't need those for the time being. And I think what I'm also going to do is come to this shape and increase its size. Let's make, make it 1920. So it's just off the edge of the screen there. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to properties and scale and add parameter behavior and a ramp. What I want to do is scale it up from something very small to something that sends it off the screen. Now, I can't actually start with a value of zero because to do so would create a hiccup in the loop. So we actually need to start with a value of something greater than zero. So I'm going to go for 1%. And so for my end value, I think I'm going to go for something like 150 so that I'm well clear of the frame. But we're not seeing anything. And that's because what I should have done before I applied the ramp, let's say turn it off, is to set that scale down to zero. So the ramp is actually working from zero rather than from 100%. So now if I turn the ramp back on again, here we go. We've got our seamless tunnel. And you can see that... It's starting very, very small and we kind of pretty much can't see it at all. So we might be happy with that distribution, but I don't think I am. I think we can do better than that. I'm just going to increase that size a bit so it's kind of a bit more interesting. And also it'll show, sort of show us something, which is that they get a lot fatter as they get towards the camera, which is kind of OK. But maybe if we didn't want that, what would we do? So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that ramp. So instead to the scale, I'm going to apply add parameter behavior exponential. And then again, let's start with a value of one and an end value of 150. And you'll see that's kind of much more tunnel like because of that e exponential function on the scale. And if we come over to the keyframe editor so we can view that, you'll see how that works. It starts very, 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 very slow and then speeds up a lot towards the end. So the, the squares are all packed together very tightly at the beginning and then they gradually spread out. But there's another way we could actually do this. Instead of using scale, let's reset that scale to 100 and delete that exponential. We could apply a behavior to the Z position. So let's again start with ramp and I'm going to start with a start value of something like negative 50,000 and an end value of, say, something like 250. And you can see that that's another different sort of look. But you'll notice in this case, because I haven't sent it far enough back in Z space, 
that we're seeing a little bit of a glitch each time the loop begins again at the back there. But again, there's another way we could do this. So let me just delete that ramp. And instead of that, on the Z position again, let's right click and add parameter behavior. And let's go for logarithmic. And again, let's set a start value of negative 50,000 and an end value of 200. And you can see that's kind of much more interesting. You've actually got a, a sort of pretty satisfying spread there. And they spawn quite interestingly at the back there. It's kind of quite a natural start to it. And I, I think I quite like logarithmic as an option. So again, if we come to the keyframe editor, you can see how that curve looks very, very fast at the beginning, which spreads out these ones at the back, and then very slow at the end, which uh, gives a nice distribution at the front there. But we could also do something else again. We could delete that logarithmic and instead we could keyframe this Z value. So come to the first frame, keyframe, negative 50,000. Come to the last frame, uh, what do we say, 200. And then we can take this curve and we can manually adjust it. So we can grab the Bezier handles and make a curve of our own. And I'm kind of making a bit of a mess of this, but you can see that we can sort of adjust it to taste to some degree. Grab this other handle and, you know, uh, as I say, making a mess of it. But you get the overall idea. I think what I might do, though, just is undo all that and get back to our logarithmic, which was actually pretty good, really. So again, we can adjust the end offset to get it all happening faster. So let's again try 360. And you can see how that's kind of now working. A little bit more obvious that those are spawning at the back, but I don't think that contributes to the sense that the loop isn't working. It's just everything else is so smooth, it's pretty good. I think what I'll do is I'll just increase this dimensions, the scale of that shape even more. So let's go for something like that. So it's kind of more filled in. So now what we can do, if we want to actually disguise that at the back there, we can come to the top of that group. We can select the rectangle tool and we can draw, holding down the shift key, we can draw a rectangle like that, come over, make sure to center it up, and then they will appear from behind that rectangle, and in some ways that's actually quite good. I'll come back to this in a second. I want to now talk about color. As I mentioned, we can't actually use the replicator. We could, you know, in theory, kind of come to one of these uh, gradient options here, but that's actually going to create glitches in the in the loop. So I'm actually going to come to the rectangle itself and the color of the outline. And let's come to the first frame. Let's set a keyframe for that color. I'm going to pick orange. Then I'm going to come to somewhere in the middle. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to pick uh, cyan. Then I'm going to come to there maybe and pick this purple and come to the end and pick orange. And the end result is something like that. And if we come to the timeline editor, we can adjust the spread of those colors by adjusting the positions of these keyframes. You'll notice I can reintroduce that purple just by moving that keyframe there. And now that loop works really nicely with our three different colors. So there's a little trick we could do if we wanted to soften off that rectangle in the middle, that white rectangle. I mean, it doesn't have to be white. We could actually make it any color we want. We could make it sort of purple or we could make it uh, orange. It would All of these options would probably work, but let's actually go back to white. And I'm going to come to filters and blur and zoom blur. And then I'm going to increase this amount quite a lot. And you can see that then we get this nice sort of glow with these corners that are coming off it. They kind of help to tie it all together. I think that's actually quite a nice effect personally. And then we could accentuate the feeling that these are corners here by actually adding a whole new element. So I'm going to come down here and select the line tool, hold down the shift key to draw a nice straight line like that. Let's just center it up. And then I'm going to come to object and replicate. I'm going to select circle for the shape and outline for the arrangement. I want to turn on align angle, 
and we only want four points obviously because there's only four corners let's come over and rotate this through 45 degrees let's quickly come back to that line and i think i want to make it black come back to the replicator and we just need to scale this out a bit till it's sort of sitting roughly there in terms of this box at the back and then we also need to move that box above it so it's kind of just all fading off like that and the net result is something like that and of course what we could do is we could group everything so make a new group click new group put everything into that and then what we could do is we could rotate that entire group through 90 degrees for example over the duration of the loop so come to the first frame set a keyframe rotation come to frame 49 so frame after our loop is finished and set that to 90 and then the result is this probably the wrong direction we should probably go for negative 90 there so there you go i haven't really thought about this design it's really just to give you an idea of the the potential here but the point to make here is that because we're rotating the square through 90 degrees or it could be in multiples of 90 degrees we're effectively disguising the loop because the square rotated through 90 degrees looks exactly the same as it not rotated. So that's why that little rotation loop is actually working. So I've undone those lines and that group animation because there's one other thing I want to show you before we finish. And I might even turn off this rectangle here because that's not going to work either. I'm going to come back to my source rectangle. So what I want to do is I want to come to the rotation and add parameter behavior ramp and what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a start value of say 270 and now you can see we've got this really interesting effect we've got to do multiples of 90 so let there's 90 here is a 180 we looked at 270 which looked like that 360 looks like this so we would have to do something about that center there because it's it's quite obviously popping now but we could just quite simply add, instead of a rectangle, we could add a circle and just make it large enough to hide that source, center it up like that. And then they kind of appear from behind the circle. And if we wanted more of a glowing effect, we could simply come to the shape and give it a bit of feather. So that's kind of quite interesting. And finally, I just want to point out that we can actually put other elements into this group now that we've built this whole arrangement. So again, I'm going to select the circle tool and holding down the shift and option key, draw out a circle like that. I need to make it pretty big. I need to make sure to center it up. And again, let's have an outline, no fill. Uh, we don't want this too large, something like this. And what we can do is actually just copy that logarithmic off the uh, the rectangle. So I'm going to option drag it onto the circle. And now you'll see we've got circles as well. We could maybe push the rectangles above it so they're kind of nested in there. And one final fun thing we could do is we could actually oscillate the X position of this. So come to the X position, add parameter behavior, oscillate. And now you'll see we've got these interesting sort of swirling psychedelic circles. So I hope that's given you lots of ideas for things to play around with. It's a really useful technique for all manner of different kinds of project. Anyway, thanks very much indeed for watching and hope to see you again soon.